switch over here. Okay, we're live now. So, oh. yeah, we can just wait a few seconds um, when it starts. Thanks for joining us if you're already up. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're just waiting for the go. I got to get one of those signs that you have. <laughs> yeah, I like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, Action. thumbs up. Okay, well, welcome to our first live interview on a Gentleman's Gazette. Today with uh, Brock McGough from The Modest Man. Brock, uh, welcome. Uh, how are you today? Doing great. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Uh, it's awesome. Thanks for making some time for us. So, you know, first I thought um, it would be really great to, to learn why you started The Modest Man and how you started it? Were there any kind of, you know, reasons? Was it a process? Just tell us more about it. Yeah, I mean, so uh, if, if you don't know uh, me or anything about me, so I am uh, I'm a smaller guy. I'm 5'6", 130 pounds, uh, soaking wet. And, um, <laughs> you know, I wasn't a, I wasn't really into style or menswear. Um, for the first 25 years of my life, uh, I wasn't, you know, uh, a well-dressed guy. I, you know, I kind of wore whatever I could find. Um, and I got to a point where it was, I graduated from college. Um, I was at my second uh, professional job, and it was a pretty formal environment. And I was around people who were, you know, wearing suits every day. Uh, and I realized that I didn't really have the right clothes. And so I decided, you know, I have some money now. I'm going to go buy some nicer clothes. <clears throat> and uh, so I started to buy more expensive clothes. But I still didn't look good, and I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> you know, so, so the problem was, so I, I figured out just by you know, doing research and um, that, my, you know, my clothes didn't fit. And it was hard to find clothes that fit, obviously, because I'm not average. I'm not an off-the-rack kind of guy. Um, and I remember I actually asked a coworker one day, this guy who was always very well-dressed, uh, I asked him, like, how he does it. And, you know, for a guy to ask another guy that, it's, n it's not an easy thing to do, right? Yeah. Uh, and he told me, he, he said, I, I go to the tailor. I get all my stuff tailored. And that was, like, a light bulb, you know. So I started going to the tailor. Uh, and I realized that fit is very important, and I couldn't find any information on the internet about how to dress well as a shorter man, so I started writing. Okay, great. So what was the first tailor you had? So the first, I mean, the first time I went to the tailor, I went to my mom's tailor, <laughs> and I got a pair of jeans shortened, and, uh, and you know, it, it was like life-changing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, interesting. All right. So, how would you describe your style? You know, how do you dress on a daily basis? Um, what would you say? You know, are core pieces in your wardrobe, and are you more relaxed? Are you casual? Do you wear a lot of suits? Just you know, tell us more about it. Yeah, I mean, I say so. I you know, I'm a blogger now, so I'm a full time blogger, so I don't really have to dress up and. Uh, uh, you know, I can kind of wear whatever I want uh, unless I'm doing an event or something like that. So um, I tend to uh, to be on the more casual side um, most days. I would say if I could sum up my style, uh, I'd, I'd say it's like smart casual. Uh, so I try to look, uh, you know, very neat and put together. But I don't I don't dress up very often. But I I dress well every day. You know what I mean? So most days I'm in. Um, you know, chinos or uh, nice jeans. Uh, in the summertime, of course, I wear shorts. Uh -huh. um, I wear a lot of button-up shirts. Uh, you know, jackets sometimes, and I probably only wear a suit. You know, once or twice a month. Okay. So, how many suits do you have in your wardrobe? Would you say? Let's see. Right now, I have. I think I have about five suits in my closet. Okay. That's a good, you know, that's a good, that's a good number. But you probably, and as you said, you know, you didn't, you didn't start like that, right? And so my question would be, you know, what when you started, 
um, getting interested in clothes, what were kind of three items that you realized, oh, you needed to have? Or maybe, you know, you did some mistakes along the way and you now realize, well, if I had to do it all over, these would be like the three items I would really recommend um, every like shorter guy should get or mm -hmm. should get tailored or something because it makes a huge impact. Yeah, I, I think that, I mean, I think the number one uh, kind of mistake that, that most shorter guys are making right now is uh, is they're not getting their pants hemmed. And it's, it's such a basic thing, but it's so easy to do and it's so cheap. You can even do it yourself if you're willing to learn. Um, or you can take your pants to the dry cleaner and do it for like $10. But I think that's the number one thing. Um, so it doesn't really matter if, if we're talking about jeans, chinos, trousers. The length matters, you know. And I, and I think for a shorter guy, um, you should aim for little or no break in your pants. So yes, I agree. Yeah, yeah slight break, um, if anything. Uh, and, and I, you know, a lot of my pants uh, are very tapered and they have no break, and I, I personally like that look. Um, as far as like key items, I think that. Uh, for a long time, like I didn't realize that I wasn't wearing the appropriate footwear for my level of dress. So I would be, say, in business casual, but my shoes were more casual. Um, and I think that that's one of the things that took me a while to learn. Is like it's okay to, if anything, your shoes should be a little bit above your level of dress. Like it's okay to wear a dressy shoe with jeans, but um, it's it's you know, usually not okay to wear a more casual shoe with, like, trousers or a suit. Um, so I, I think that, uh, you know, if I could pick three key items that I wish I had kind of had earlier, it would be, like, a go-to blazer uh, or sport coat, mm -hmm. uh, probably blue or gray, uh, probably solid color or a, a subtle pattern, um, a go-to pair of jeans, and, you know, slim, dark wash, um, Preferably something high end that's going to last for a while. And um, for me, since I don't dress up very often, my go to pair of shoes is brown leather ankle boots. Um, and whether it's like a desert boot or truck style, like uh, it can be casual or dressy, but you have to have, and it might be different for you, but like you have to have that one go to pair of shoes that you can wear, you know, two, two three times a week if you need to. Absolutely. Okay, so we'll have our first um, reader question. Let me read it to you. Um, shorts are in style now, are really designed for basketball players and men over 6'2", which are very unflattering on shorter guys um, who need to show more leg so the proportion looks better. I mean, that's true. It's all about proportion. But the question specifically is, what can we do to find shorts that fall mid-thigh to two-thirds thigh length so you know it looks proportional and just right on a shorter guy? Yeah, great question. Um, so these days, uh, shorter inseams on shorts are, are pretty uh, in style right now. So it's not hard to find shorts with seven-inch inseams, five-inch inseams. You know, if if you want to go a little more aggressive on it. So the length um, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, you know, most major stores, um, you know, like the J. Crews of the world, are going to have seven-inch shorts and five-inch shorts. I think one of the problems that a lot of shorter, especially shorter, um, thinner guys meet is they they get the length right, but the leg opening is too wide. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you end up with uh, the shorts are kind of like like a hoop around your uh, leg, and there's a lot of space between. Um, you know, the, the diameter of your, of your shorts is too big for your leg. I understand. So I think what you can do, but. So you should treat shorts just like pants. You can get them hemmed. You can get them uh, taken in. You can get them tapered. So take your shorts to the tailor. I mean, I've gotten shorts tailored before, and you know, I, in my opinion, it's totally worth the money. Oh yes, I agree. I mean, it's you know, a a pair of shorts is is just like a pair of pants. It's just shorter, and you can do the same things you can do to a regular pair of pants or slacks. And um, yeah, I have I have a similar problem because my thighs. Are very big, so I always need to find some that are not too tight. When you're shorter and your build is just a little more modest, you want everything with a slimmer and trimmer fit, and that's going to be the tricky part. I agree. But what you can always do, right? You you can take something that is slim and is long and have it shortened so you get the right height, because the proportions won't be affected by it. Is that right? 
Yeah, totally. And and you can also, you know, you can also uh, say you have uh, shorts that you really like the shape, you like the silhouette, um, uh, you know, like the, the taper, but you don't like the length. You can roll them up like that. That's a really nice look. You can even use like hem tape or uh, or like no sew um, glue to to keep that hem for a while, um, or like iron iron hem tape. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do, but but I think that um, you know don't just focus on length, focus on uh, leg opening too. Okay, sounds good, wonderful. All right, and just for our readers, if you want to ask questions, simply go to our Google Plus event page or to our YouTube page, and you can ask live questions there. We're going to put them in a queue and then answer them as, as they fit, okay? Um, okay, good. Next question for Brock here. Um, what... Um, do you have, I mean, you talked about, you know, the blazer and things, and these are things that apply to, to all men. But do you have a few things, like specific tips that help shorter men, you know, where you say, really pay attention to that, and that only applies to shorter men and not to anybody else? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's, like, that, so that's, like, what I do, you know. So, like, like I try to look at everything through the lens of um, the shorter body type. Mm -hmm. And one of the problems is that you run into um, is shorter men come in all different shapes and sizes too. So you can have, you know, you can have a shorter guy who uh, is very athletic, and maybe, um, you know, they have specific problems uh, like maybe their shoulders and chest are very wide, and if they find shirts that fit in their shoulders, they're too billowy around the waist. You might have a, a shorter guy who is uh, a little heavier. You know, and he's going to have his own set of specific problems. But in general, um, there are there are a lot of things that kind of apply to every man under five nine. And um, I mean, I, I can talk about just a couple uh, sort of helpful tips. So um, yeah, please do, please do. Cool, cool. So fit is obviously the most important thing. I always talk about fit, but color and patterns can also um, make a huge impact if if you're a shorter guy, and you want to dress um, in a way that's going to, uh, you know, not make you look shorter, basically. Uh, it's sort of like a long gait and streamline your profile. Um, so, like, one thing you can do is really pay attention to contrast in your outfit. Okay. So, what exactly do you mean by that? Yeah, so, so uh, picture, picture two guys side by side, and one of them has a white shirt and black pants, and the other one has a white shirt and tan pants, mm -hmm. like uh, khaki color. Um, one of those guys is, is going to be cut in half visually because there's a stark contrast between his top half and his bottom half. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right. The other guy with khaki pants, is, is uh, he's not going to be cut in half visually because there's not much contrast between his top and bottom half. So short men, in general, try to avoid that kind of contrast that cuts them in half visually. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So you would recommend to say, do or do not cut yourself in half visually? Do not. <laughs> yeah, if you, can avoid, if you can avoid it, do not. And like sometimes, like for example, with what you're wearing right now, you know, if you were to take, I assume like your, your pants are dark, right? So if you were to take your jacket off, yes. then you, you would be sort of, you would have that contrast. And that's okay. Like there, there are certain occasions where you're going to have to wear a black suit or a tuxedo, and maybe you'll take your jacket off so you can dance, and you're, you're going to be cut in that visual. That's okay. These are just guidelines. But if you have the choice, when you're thinking about how to put together your outfit in the morning or when you're buying a new item of clothing, just think, is this item going to fit into my wardrobe? Is this going to help me create outfits that uh, have a lot of contrast in them or outfits that don't have a lot of contrast? And in general, you should try to avoid... Um, stark contrast between your uh, top and bottom. Okay. Another reader question here. Um, what style mistakes do you typically notice um, shorter men commit? You know, what are the mistakes you see done over and over again that specifically pertain to, to modest men? Yeah. You know, this is probably a mistake that pertains to everybody, but um, the, the thing that I see, I, I sound like a broken record because I always talk about this, but Short men are wearing clothes that are too big for them. Yes. You know, they're wearing clothes that are too long uh, for them. Uh, and 
it's not their fault because you know it's very hard to find clothes that are short enough, um, sleeves that are short enough, pants that are short enough, uh, casual shirts that are short enough in the torso. So that's the number one mistake that that shorter men are making is they're wearing clothes that are too big. Okay. Okay. Any any other things that you could think of in terms of proportion or you know a specific jacket length or just a few more specifics in a way? Yeah, yeah. I think I mean proportion is is a huge part of it too because especially with accessories and like the details in your clothes. So um, for example, if you uh, if you think about wearing a suit. Um, there's a lot of details that go into a suit. Uh, there's the lapel width. Mm -hmm. There's the collar point length on your shirt. There's the uh, size, the dimensions of the pocket, the width of your tie. Um, all of these things, you know, your, even your belt, um, whether your pants have cuffs and pleats, um, you know, a double-breasted versus single-breasted jacket. So, with, you know, you can have the same suit with different details, and the details will make or break your look. And the thing is, a lot of these uh, details are more about um, your overall body. So it's it's you know the width and the shape of your body, not necessarily just your height. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, shorter men can really do themselves a favor by paying attention to these details. So, for example, for a guy like me who is uh, below average height and a pretty slim guy, uh, when I buy a suit. Especially for like my go-to suits, like a, you know my navy blue suit, mm -hmm. and the single breasted, uh, slim lapels because I wear slim ties. Because they're uh, a slimmer build too, right? It, it all has to make sense, right? If you have a, a four-inch lapel, it just yeah. it'll consume you. It'll it'll go to your to your to your like you know shoulder seam, and it just doesn't look right. So yeah. I totally get that. You want that slim look. Yeah, exactly. Because I, because like I, a four inch lapel, it's gonna make my my head and neck look like very very thin, yeah. you know. And, and so I want it to all look proportional, like it was actually made for me and not made for a bigger person that, and I just happen to be wearing it. Because <laughs> yeah. it makes you look, you know, like it, it makes you look smaller and sometimes younger than you really are. And so like in the workplace, like you don't want that. You want to look, you know. Uh, your age and and uh, you want to be taken seriously. So, so yeah, pay attention to proportion and um, and just the little details. Okay. So, what would you say? You know, for example, you said slimmer ties. Do you have like a, a tie width that you stick with? Yeah, for me, I like uh, no slimmer than two and a half inches at the widest point. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the kind of universal length is between two and three quarters and three inches. I think almost anybody can wear that. Um, anything wider than three inches, I think slim guys should stay away from. You know, maybe if you're a bigger guy, like athletic, or a hefty guy, you can go with a wider tie. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, 2.5, 2.75, that's the perfect uh, width. Okay. You know, one thing that was always interesting to me was that, especially in the U.S., there you can find a lot of, you know, big and tall um, brands or stores that are really focused towards you know that market niche. Then of course you know you have regular guys, but considering there are you know a lot of guys who are a bit shorter, I was always surprised that there's hardly any like market segment that focuses on these men. Like, have you found specific um, brands that really kind of just focus on that kind of guy? Yeah. Man, you're, you're you're preaching to the choir here. Like I I feel that, and uh, you know I, I don't know why that why there's not more uh, companies catering to the shorter men because almost every store has a big and tall section, and they all have petite sections for women. But you'll never see a petite section for men, and I think part of the reason is because men don't want to be called petite. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there's a better word. Maybe like modest. You know. Um, <laughs> But but there are some companies starting up that are focusing on the shorter man, and um, I'm a big supporter of all these companies because like if you go to if you go to uh, my blog, you'll see uh, their advertisements, and you know I feature their clothing because I want them to succeed. Um, so can I mention them? Is that of course, please. Of okay, course. so uh, some of these companies, um, one of them is Peter Manning. Okay, Peter. Uh, I'll see they're based out of Brooklyn. 
uh, and they have a showroom there, but they, they sell their clothes online. And uh, they, they make awesome, it's, it's classic American um, sportswear. So button-up, sweaters, chinos, jeans. They just uh, released their first suit. And uh, I, I just got one, and I mean, let me tell you, like, it's not, it's not perfect. Like, I'm still going to get some alterations done. Mm -hmm. But to put on a suit where the jacket has sleeves that aren't too long is an amazing feeling. Yeah, you just don't know that. You never have that. It just doesn't that's, exist. Never have right? any. Yeah, so that's an amazing feeling. Um, there's another company called uh, Jax Everett. Okay. Jax Everett. They're based out of uh, Houston, I believe. And um, they're more of like a, like a luxury, uh, in like luxury price range. Uh, but they make really nice, you know, button-up shirts. They even have T-shirts, um, sweaters, and I think we'll be expanding pretty soon to other items. Um, there's a new one, a brand new one called Ash and Anvil, and they uh, they just launched the uh, uh, Indiegogo. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, did. You go to my YouTube channel. It's a Kickstarter campaign, right? Indiegogo. Yep, yep. And they they got funded, and uh, they're focusing. Their first item is going to be uh, the button-up shirt at a casual length, so you can wear it on top. Which is perfect because every every button up shirt is too long it's for too guys. Long for you. Yeah. So that's that's a few of the companies, and there are going to be more um, coming up. And and I'll, I'll I'll just give you a little teaser. I'm working on a little something too, so stay tuned for that. Wonderful, wonderful. I mean, it makes perfect sense, right? And I mean, I, when 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 we launched Fort Belvedere, it was the same thing. Like I. Something I'm always particular about is the tie length, and it can vary, you know, with the way you wear your pants. If you have a high rise, you need a shorter tie, and yeah. if you have a very low rise, you need a slightly longer tie. But then, you know, the thing came up, okay, if you're, if you're tall, you know, you need a taller tie. And even tall men oftentimes, they, you know, they have long ties, but they only make them in two or three different fabrics, and then that's it. And, mm -hmm. and all others, you know, get... get to choose from hundreds and thousands of them. And so we said, hey, we want to offer a tie, you know, that works for every man. And so I looked at, you know, okay, smaller men, you know, seven centimeters, two and three quarter inches at the most in width, because otherwise it, it doesn't look right. And having a shorter tie enables you to wear like a four in hand knot or an oriental knot. You don't always have to go with this big Windsor knot right. that then, you know, it's just so, so wrong because the knot is gigantic and your head is small and it just makes you look off, right? And then, yeah. is that something you ever experienced like with, with neckwear or so or, or where do you get yeah. your ties and what what do you look for in ties? Like what's the length you go for? Yeah, right on. And, and I have two of your ties, uh, four velvet ties, and they are my go-to ties because of the length and the width. Um, they're also really nice, but they're... Uh, they're you know uh, two and three quarters uh, wide, the widest point, and I think they're uh, like fifty six inches long or so. Yeah, and, we may make them shorter just so it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they're and they're great because they're so that they are the the shortest ties that I own, and uh, and so I can tie a four hand knot, and you know they don't they don't go way past my belt. Um, so yeah, I mean that's honestly like actually your ties I think. I think there are some other companies doing shorter ties, but um, you have probably one of the biggest collections of, of ties available in shorter lengths. Exactly. That, that's what I'm saying. It's not just, you know, three or four ties. It's actually, you know, we're offering every tie in a short length, and that's unusual. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, and that, cause that's a problem that uh, I think every, every short man can relate to as well. And, and usually what we end up doing is, you know, you tie whatever. Either you have to tie a big knot, which, if you have like a small face like I do, the, the bigger knot doesn't look right. Yeah. Um, what you can do though is like you tie like a four hand knot, and then you end up having this excess length, and you have to tuck it in to your shirt or to your pants, which is not ideal. You know? Okay. I have like Cyrus here is asking, in your opinion, is there an appropriate way on how one should dress based on your age and profession? Yeah, Cyrus. Good, good to hear from you, man. So Cyrus has been. Uh, a long-time reader, and uh, he's like my earliest supporter, so I'm glad he can join us. And I, I believe... Um, oh, really? That's cool that you know him. I mean, it's an unusual name, right? I, it makes sense. I'm assuming this is the same Cyrus. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, sorry for just uh, some other Cyrus. But, uh, 
Um, but yeah, that's 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 a great point because I think one of the things that we run into is um, a lot of the clothes that are tend to be smaller, tend to be cut smaller, are sold by companies that cater to a younger audience. You know. Yes. So so for example, like if you go to a place like um, uh, H&M or American Eagle, you know these places. You know they're not the highest quality clothing, and you know, but they they do tend to fit better on a, mm -hmm. a smaller guy. And so I guess they're slimmer. It's like the modern trend. Everything is, is slimmer, and so sometimes you know it's really slim, and so they cater to that, and so by default that that suits you better, right? Yeah, by default it does, but it also kind of makes you look young, and so and that's okay maybe if you're in your twenties, you know. But once you get in like the thirties, forties. You might feel a little awkward wearing those clothes. You might feel like totally. a teenager or something. So I think that um, you know older guys should probably stay away from those places. I mean, you can still shop there, uh, but you know, make sure that you're not getting things with logos and stuff like that. Um, but I think for older guys, you just you really have to make the tailor your, your friend because um, you're going to have to shop at stores that cater to a you know, to an older crowd and I guarantee those clothes are not going to fit as well off the rack. So you're going to have to get your clothes tailored. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything, you know, where you can, like, when if you're a 50-year-old short guy, is, is there anything where you'd say, hey, this, you know, fits better? Because you mentioned these American Eagle and stuff, but, you know, I, I would imagine, like, men at that age, you know, have just a very different, they're in a different environment, they have a different profession, you know, they have a certain standing. If they come in kind of an Abercrombie and Fitch American Eagle outfit, it just yeah. doesn't suit them at all. Yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would check out some of the, some of the companies that I that I mentioned um, earlier. You know, even if you're not used to buying clothes online or you've never heard of these companies, and I know it's kind of a risk, like to try you know the new brands, and um, but I would check them out because they they're um, pretty age agnostic. Like especially Peter Manning, like I I think they're catering to um, you know, adults, not not a uh, not teenagers or young adults. So I would check them out. I think you're, you're going to look fine in their clothes um, at any age. Okay, good. Um, so let me continue here with um, another question that I had. I I know recently. I mean, you started. When did you start your website? What year? I started it in uh, late 2012, I believe. 2012, okay. And so now you recently decided to, to pursue this kind of in, in a different way and do it full time and stuff. So how was, you know, how has this kind of changed your view on the industry and uh, what do you spend your time on? Was it exactly the way you expected it to be or did you face some challenges that you're working on and, you know, how has your readership developed and were you supportive? Tell us more about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm still, uh, you know, facing a lot of challenges and, and just trying to, you know, turn turn this sort of blog into a sustainable business that I can, you know, really, uh, that can really support me, you know, long term. And uh, so it's it's getting there, but, you know, I mean, as you know, it's, it's a lot of work uh, to, to grow any sort of, you know, blog or online presence. And um, Totally. Yeah, and, and especially at the beginning, because you start writing and you're like, I don't know if anybody's going to read this, you know, and you have to keep pushing through. But um, it's it's been amazing. Like, so I left, I, I went full time in January, and the the best part of it is I can answer uh, more emails, I can connect with people like we're doing right now. Um, you know, I don't have to do everything on nights and weekends. You know, so I have time now and. Uh, you know, yesterday I, I took my uh, I took my dad for an early Father's Day present to uh, uh, a big grooming lounge, and we got hand and foot treatments. You know, and I'm going to do a little video about that. And it's really cool to be able to do that stuff. You know, during the week, like during business hours. Totally. Um, yeah. So, so I think I think that you know, like for for guys out there who are either pursuing a side business or are interested in blogging uh, or doing anything online. Definitely something you can do, sort of. You can moonlight, you know. You can do it after work, um, do it with a full-time job. But I think eventually, 
you know, if you really want to do anything the right way, I think you do have to kind of make that transition and uh, dedicate you know, time to it, and that you have to kind of really put it behind it because oftentimes people think, oh, it's just like this weekend side project thing, but once you do it, you realize it's a lot of work, and it's not yeah. just a, a little blogging, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a ton of work, and, and I think and the thing is with, with blogging, and it's there's like your readership, you know, and, and it's always fun to see that you got more traffic, you know, this month than you did last month, or that you have more email subscribers, but at the same time, you know, the most important thing is if, if you're making trying to make a living off of it is revenue. And so a lot of people don't understand that, like, when we, or at least for me, like, um, when I do, like, a sponsored post or something like that, like, that's how I'm making a living, you know? Yes. So, and and I, I hope you, and I try to tell people that, you know, like, I get approached, and, and my blog, you know, is, is relatively small compared to a lot of other blogs, and I get approached by you know, at least once a day by a company asking about promotion. And, and a lot of the times, as you know, they, they want to send you free products and have you promote them. And so, you know, one of the things that's changed since I've been doing this full time is, um, you know, negotiating that stuff and, and trying to find companies that are going to be really good partners, um, you know, and not, not just sort of uh, taking, you know, free products and... Uh, and yeah, you can't pay rent to your landlord in shoes or shirts, right? Yeah, he just wants right. cash, and it's true, and it's for everything. But it doesn't mean that you, you know, you you just sell yourself out. You you're still very careful, and I think you, and we all of us, you know, we turn down way more than we actually accept, and we, you know, you promote only stuff that is in line with with what you do, and so it's yeah. it's not like you're losing anything or the reader loses out on anything. You just have to. Look at the revenue, just like you said. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think people know that, like for for gentlemen's gazette or or a modest man, like if you see some, if you see a sponsored post or me promoting anything, you just know that you know that's that's one out of ten companies, and the other nine weren't a good fit, you know, and, okay. and we had to come down. So, so yeah, if it makes it on the blog, it, it's something I believe in. Okay, Kenneth asks, Hey Brock. I recently became interested in a world of fine fragrance. I just bought myself some Mitsu Mitsuko. I think my wife thinks I'm a little crazy. Um, do you think uh, a man should wear whatever he wants, or, or, or what's your take on that? So, so if your wife doesn't like your cologne, is that, is that the issue? <laughs> Basically, yeah. Oh, man, you might want to ask Raphael. I'm not married, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun, though, because that, that goes for dressing, too. It's like... You know how how much are you doing it for yourself, and how much are you doing it for other people? I think that you know if you're going to be around somebody a lot, I think that um, it's important that for something like fragrance, it's probably important that at least that they don't dislike it. But on the other hand, if it makes you happy, you know, go do it. <laughs> so um, yeah. yeah, that's that, that's a tricky one. That's tricky. What do you think about that? Well, you know. The cologne smells differently, but if, if you're around your wife a lot and she complains all the time, maybe try to find something you know that that doesn't offend her that much. But you just uh, do something where it's you know it, it works and you like it. There's so many colognes out there, you, you'll find something that that'll work. Yeah, plenty of options. So you, you can probably find something that you both love. <laughs> okay, so um, somebody says here, um, I like your hairstyle. Do you think shorter men need to pay a special attention to their hairstyle because of the proportions, or can they just, you know, wear whatever they want? That's a great question, and I get that question a lot about, uh, you know, what's the best hairstyle for shorter guys. Um, honestly, with hair, I think you should do what makes you feel the best and what makes you feel the most confident. Now, that said, um, this kind of hairstyle, you know, where it's kind of like up in the front. Uh huh. Add a couple inches to your height, you know, to your height. So ah, that's a good tip. I didn't think about that. Yeah, totally. You can just like get a little up, and it just at a at an inch or so. That's awesome. Right. So it is a good hairstyle, and it's it's, it's kind of trendy right now. This kind of classic uh, hair, but but I think that with hair too, it's important to experiment. Um, a lot of guys will have the same haircut for years and years, and there's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, it's just hair. You know, it's going to grow back. One day you're not going to have any left, so I, I think you know you should experiment and maybe get out of your comfort zone a little bit. Um, when I was younger, I would never have a haircut like this. You know, I had short hair, 
Short hair. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I had that for most of my life. And, you know, in college I had long, shaggy hair. Uh -huh. uh, but, you know, now I have this more professional and, uh, and I'm comfortable with this now. And, you know, in a few months or a year I might get tired of this haircut and try something new. And I, I think that I think that you should try try new things with, with your hairstyles. Okay, that's good. Um, Mike asks, and he asks both of us, it's like, do you think that suits that are made of lesser fabrics, such as under 100 thread count, are even worth buying? Or should I just get a customer better off the rack variant every time? What do you, what's your take on that? Like yeah, that's a good fabrics, question. Like what, how do you approach fabrics? Yeah, I say you should buy the highest quality that you can afford at the time. Mm -hmm. So don't, you know, don't go into credit card debt for a new suit, but buy the highest quality you can afford at the time. Now, when it comes to fabrics, you have to think about how often you're going to wear the suit. Like if you're buying a workforce suit uh, that you're going to wear, you know, every week to work, um, you know, you should buy a durable fabric. And uh, you know, regardless of whether it's it's more or less expensive, you should focus on durability. You know, maybe get an extra pair of trousers. Yeah. If you're buying, if you already have your core set of suits and you're buying maybe um, more of like a party suit or like like a, a a special occasion suit, you know, then you can go with you know maybe a a, a finer fabric that um, it's not as durable, but maybe it's it's just really luxurious and it drapes really nicely. But I I'd like to hear your thoughts on that one too. Yeah, well, I think you know that the thread count itself is. First of all, super numbers, there's no legal definition or, or industry-wide definition. So th there are a lot of shenanigans going on, you know, people labeling, oh, this is super 250 and super, you know, 300, 800, when it, in fact it is not, you know, it's a, a cheap, poly blended fabric. And uh, it, like the idea behind that whole numbering system was that, you know, a, a thread that is like 100 meters long weighs one gram when it's super 100. Now everybody defines it differently, and, and a higher super number should indicate a finer fabric, which doesn't necessarily mean more durable. So you can have a very durable fabric that is also made of a, a strong weave, because that's the other thing. Like just the, the super number doesn't tell you what weave it is. You know, it can be a tight weave, it can be an open weave, it can be a worsted, it can be a flannel. Mm -hmm. So if you go for durability, you, you, you want a worsted. With a with a nice tight weave because if it's a loose and flannel, you're gonna wear out the fabrics, the fabric where it rubs much more quickly. Right. So I think you can get good uh, quality fabrics even at a lower price level, and if you have this, you need suits that you really wear every day. Um, depending on on your build, some men actually say you know go with two pair of pants because you wear the pants out quicker than your jacket. Yeah. Um, for me personally, that was never really the case. I, I've never had a, a, a pair of trousers wear out, but that's also because I, I built up my wardrobe early on, so I had a good rotation. I never had like an, an office job that I had to sustain where I just had two suits, basically. And when you start out like that, maybe getting an extra pair of trousers will get you the durability you need. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and with the trousers, I, I have had trousers uh, wear out when when I was in the office environment and I was wearing them, you know, for eight to ten hours at a time. And I think what one little trick is the, the spot where it's going to wear out is is where your wallet is. So take your wallet out every time you sit down, and that won't happen. That's one of those little little tricks. Okay. All right. So now you know I've, I've I've we started that and we're thinking about it. it's a pretty cool like just getting people a bit a bit of sense of your style and I want you to talk about it so do you prefer Oxfords or do you prefer Derby shoes what what's your take on that why do you like one over the other or maybe do you go with an entirely different style of shoe like just I like Oxfords <laughs> you like the Oxfords okay yeah, I just I don't know I just like the look man I I like the um... I think they're cleaner, and if I'm gonna wear that that level of shoe, like it's it's probably gonna be for me. It's probably gonna be with a pretty like dressy outfit, and I just think they're. I don't know. I I just like them better. You know, I think they're a cleaner look. Okay, so what's your like? How many oxers do you have versus derbies or loafers or maybe other shoes like boat shoes or casual shoes or yeah? 
I, I have a pretty lean shoe collection, so um, I actually think that most guys can get away with only owning like six pairs of shoes. Okay. Not, not what, what are those? What are those six? So, so you need your uh, your you know black cap toe Oxford. Uh, you can you can have different details, but you need like a black dress shoe. Um, black cap toe Oxford, right? Yeah, black cap toe Oxford. Yep. Um, from there, you need a brown. Uh, I mean, I would say a brown Oxford, but you know, a, a brown dress shoe. Um, and this one can be a little more casual with the details. So if you like, you know, brogues or wingtips, you you can kind of just pick whichever one you like, but it should be brown and not black. So you have both options. Okay. And what, what kind of shade of brown? You know, like black is easy because black is just black, right? But with brown, you know, you have thousands of shades. Do you think a, a like more a chocolate brown is better or like a medium brown or more like a tan? I like, um, I guess if you're only going to own one, probably a darker brown or like a kind of like a, a burgundy, like a brown that has some red in it. Mm -hmm. too, because that, that's pretty versatile. Yes. Um, if you're if you if you're gonna own two, I would you know I really like kind of like a cognac or like a like a tan mm -hmm. uh, color. So like I, I have a, for example a pair of Park Avenues, and they're in the uh, uh, kind of like tan cognac color, and I really like those. I think those go well with gray or blue. Um, but yeah, if you're only gonna own one, I'd say darker brown or burgundy. Okay, good. And what were the other four shoes? You had uh, in mind. So, so one of them, so those are kind of like your dress shoes. Um, on the casual side, you need uh, one pair of, of non-athletic sneakers. So it could be a white canvas sneaker or a white leather sneaker, or uh, a gray canvas sneaker. Um, uh, but you need, you know, a pair of uh, casual sneakers. I, I think everyone needs one of those in his wardrobe. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. You should have a a casual leather shoe that's either a loafer, like a, a driving mock, or a um, like a boat shoe. Good. But this, this is going to be a, a casual loafer style shoe that you can wear without socks in warm weather. Good. Okay. Yeah. So. And then the last one, though, the last one is seasonal because if you live um, in a very hot climate, you probably don't want like, a pair of work boots. But I think that if you live in like a temperate environment or a colder environment, a pair of really good, really high quality um, like work style boots like the Wolverine Thousand Mile, you know, or like an Alden uh, Indie boot or something like that, you go along with. Cool. Excellent. Um, so next question would be flannel or worsted? And why? Oh man, I guess that's preference. Um, I'd say worsted. For you, you know, for you, what what what's your preference? Yeah, I'd, I'd say worsted. I mean, the thing is, I, I run hot, you know, so like, and I live in a in a humid, you know, environment that gets really hot in the summertime. So, I don't have. I mean, I'll wear um, even like seasonal, like like lighter weight wool uh, suits, even in like the fall, you know, and and the winter, just because I, I get hot, you know. Yes, so I don't totally. have. Yeah, so I'm I'm not too into the flannels, but um, I don't know, what do you think about that? Yeah, no, it's just choice, and like you said, you know, if I live in a hot climate, I want a fresco. I want something where the air can blow through. I don't want a tightly woven fabric, and that's the thing. You know, you can get a super 200 fabric that is super tightly woven with like a glued canvas in your jacket, not a sewn, and you're gonna run hot very quickly. And you can have a, a, a heavier fabric that's a fresco and that's open and you stand and you just feel every little breeze. So, yeah. yeah, it's like, do you run hot or not? Where do you live? And based on that. And then what do you like? You know, some people like the touch of the flannel. And I do too. And when I can wear flannel, I wear flannel. doesn't yeah. mean I wear flannel when it's, when it's you know, 90 degrees or 30, 30 degrees Celsius outside because it just doesn't make sense. Right. Yeah. So, um, necktie or bow tie? <laughs> Oh man, I hate to say this because we're wearing a bow tie, but I, I'm a necktie guy. I, I like necktie. Okay. Guy? I, okay. If, if I have the occasion to wear a bow tie, um, you know, like if I'm in a wedding party or something like that, I'll definitely do that. Like if I'm wearing a tuxedo, 
I'm not going to wear a necktie. I'm going to wear a bow tie, you know. Um, but for my everyday uh, kind of business and events, you know, I, I wear a necktie. Yeah, one reader asks, is it, um, does it have anything to do with, you know, with the height, would you say shorter men should stay away from bow ties, or is it okay just visually and in proportions? You know, you mentioned proportions. I mean, I'm, the benefits of bow ties, they're not going to be too long. You know? yeah, that's very true, right? That's, that's good. So you could just adjust the length and use them. Right. right. I mean, you want to make sure, like, like yours is, like, perfectly proportioned. Like, you want to make sure you don't have this giant, wide, you know, big, bulky bow tie if you have a smaller face and small neck. So just about proportions. Okay. Then another question you're like, since you live in a hot, humid climate, how do you, you know, how else, apart from the fabric, what do you do to adjust to that, especially if you run hot? Yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, the thing is, you know, like, you're, you're going to be hot, you know, sometimes. Like, there's only so much you can do. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I, I love, you know, autumn and winter, because you can always add layers, but you can only take so much off before, you know, <laughs> it becomes a problem. So um, I, I go stockless, like, whenever possible. You know, I just ditch the socks. Um, uh, usually, it all summer long. You know, I'll either wear uh, like boat shoes or loafers, or even like working socks or kind of sneakers, and no socks. Um, I will wear uh, shorts when I can. You know, if, it, if I'm just wearing casual outfits, mm -hmm. uh, short sleeve button up shirts. Um, you know, I roll I roll my pants sometimes, so I have a little more leg kind of exposed to the air. So just little things like that. Um, That's true. It makes a difference. Having like your ankles exposed and also your wrists um, yeah. makes a huge difference in just how you feel. So when it's hot outside, like skip the double cuffs. Try to maybe take the button cuffs and even wear them unbuttoned. Just that will make you feel cooler. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question. Belt or suspenders? Suspenders. All the way. I mean... Again, really? Oh, that okay. That's cool. Another thing. So not not necessarily suspenders, but no belt for sure. So like when I get a suit made, I have I do side tabs. Mhm. Mm so you know one thing we talked earlier about kind of cutting yourself in half visually, a belt can do that if it, if it doesn't match if it's not the right. Totally. Color. And if you wear like khaki pants, right? And you have the khaki pants and you have the black shoes, for example, or even dark brown shoes. Yeah. You visually create that separation in the middle, so you want to avoid that. Yep. Okay. Good. Yeah. And one thing you can do, you know, so so if you get uh, if you're getting a custom suit, go with side tap, or you know, um, wear suspenders, ditch the belt. If you have pants like trousers uh, that fit well on the waist that you don't need to wear a belt, have your tailor remove the belt loops and just wear it without a belt. Exactly. It's yeah. it's not going to cost much. It's going to cost $10 or so. Tailors can do that. It's just if you don't think about it, you just never do it, right? Right, right. Yeah, that's a, that was a good good tip. Um, barrel cuffs or French cuffs? Good question, too. Uh, for me, I like barrel cuffs. Um, I don't know. I guess just a preference for me. Um, okay. So you never wear cufflinks, really? I Maybe do, a tuxedo but... Or but usually just button cuffs. Yeah, it's, for me, it just uh, cufflinks feel very dressy, and like I said, I don't, I don't wear very dressy outfits very often, but when I do, I'll wear cufflinks. Okay. And then, like, what about socks? Do you wear, like, over-the-calf socks, or do you wear short socks? Socks, man. <laughs> the so socks, the sizing is a problem, too, you know? So, like, I wear shoe size... Uh, like seven or eight in most brands. Mm -hmm. So most socks, they say one size fits all, so they're like eight to 12. Oh, they're not one size fits no, all. They're, no. they're too big. No, so what happens is the heel is up on your ankle. You know? And if you get over the calf socks, it's up above your knee. They're like stockings. <laughs> so uh, so I, I usually wear, for dress socks, I try to get over the calf socks, but I order them from companies who make smaller sizes. Yeah, um, okay. No, that yeah. makes sense. And we're actually, we, we had some socks in three sizes, and what we did now is we, we work on, like, socks with four sizes, only over the calf, because I only wear over the calf. 
So that's all we offer. But we did one that is extra, extra small feet that is shorter and doesn't go over the knee, like you said. So nice. I'll let you know once we have them so you can take a look. I'd love to have one. Because I have a pair of, uh, of, of your socks, and they're they're great socks. Uh, you know, they're high quality. But they were a little too too large. Like, we have a, a size smaller even, which I think will fit you even better. So yeah. stay, stay tuned for that. That, that. that should be good. Cool. Yeah, cool. Um, a question here from, from Jared who says, I'm 5'5 five five and have a fairly large stomach but short stature. I often have trouble maintaining my weight and was wondering if you have any advice for buying new outfits since new bespoke and made-to-measure garments can get so expensive and off the rack they really work for someone like me. So I, I wonder if the question is, so I, I think custom is a great way to go. If you can afford it, and, and you know you have the patience, sort of. It's a process, but I think I think for someone like Jerry, uh, custom or made to measure is a great option. The one thing you have to be cognizant about is is your weight going to change? You know, like if you're going to gain or lose weight, then you have to think: Is this going to fit me now? Or is it going to fit me later? Um, and I think a lot of people who fluctuate, you know, a good rule of thumb is to think. Be realistic about it. You know, like I, I know, I know a lot of, um, you know, a lot of guys who are, you know, maybe working out or uh, they know that they're going to lose some weight. It's probably better to to wait until you're at that body type before you buy an expensive custom suit. Um, but if you're probably going to stay, you know, the same weight, the same build, I'd say go ahead and get it. If anything, um, get something that fits, you know, a little primmer. And that'll be very good motivation to, you know, maintain that weight. <laughs> yeah. I oftentimes know, I, I mean, and I think custom clothes see it all the time. You know, people say, oh, I'm going to lose some weight, so, you know, make it really tight. But it actually never happens. Or right. So it's like, it's always tough. I, I'm always a big proponent of, of buying stuff for your current stature. And if you fluctuate a lot, there's ultimately not that much that can be done, right? It's like when I have a sloping shoulder and if my, my shoulder is like sloping more in the afternoon th during the day, there's nothing a tailor can, can do about that because it just fluctuates, right? And, and made-to-measure garments or usually custom garments have more fabric reserve in them. Like if you have a, a inexpensive suits, oftentimes they save, they try to minimize the cost in the fabric. So there's very little room of taking things out with a custom garment, you can do that. But even then, you know, it's going to cost you, every time you go to your alterations tailor, you're going to have to invest, you know, $50, $100 or more mm -hmm. to, to get that changed. So whenever you fluctuate in weight, it's just a tough call. There's no easy way around it yeah. because um, it only works. But it's a good motivator. Like for me, you know, like we all fluctuate in weight a little bit, but it's like th there's this point where it's like, oh, this is not going to fit anymore. Now it's getting serious. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, just be, you know, you got to be realistic with yourself. Okay, all right. So, you know, what I'm always kind of interested to learn about people is, like, what motivates you, you know, what, what drives you, and, um, yeah, tell us, like, what, you know, because having something like, like a website like yours um, requires a really, like, some you know, heart and, and, and a lot of work. So mm -hmm. you're not going to do that if you just have like a, a fainting interest in it. There must be something bigger at work that makes you, you know, get up every day and, and, and work hard to achieve your goals. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a couple things for me. Um, I mean, for, for the modest man specifically, like, I just think that guys uh, who are below average height have been vastly underserved. and almost ignored by the entire apparel industry for uh -huh. way too long. And honestly, I think it goes beyond that. I think that, um, and I don't really talk too much about, about this, and, you know, there, there are a lot of people who uh, really focus on the idea of heightism and um, kind of like prejudice against shorter men. And, you know, I think that there's some truth to that, and I think that it can be, um, it can be hard being, you know, a guy who's below average height when you're competing uh, for example, in the business world and in the dating world with, you know, taller guys. Um, so I, I just want to, I want to do everything I can to help. And I think that, 
um, looking good and putting your best foot forward every day in terms of appearance, whether it's clothing, grooming, fitness, I think that's a huge part of it. And even though it can seem kind of superficial, I think it, it's, it's not. I think it's life changing. You know, if you're a shorter man, and for me, when I started dressing well, I mean, it was like it was really life changing. So, so I want other guys like me to have that feeling. Um, but on the other side, I mean, I just love. I love business, I love entrepreneurship, I love being my own boss, you know, and uh, I love yep. everything that comes with it. So, and, and that's what, I mean, I, you know, I, I always knew I wanted to do something on my own. Uh -huh. and, uh, and so this is, this is kind of just like the, the manifestation of that. So, uh, so I'm doing everything I can just to keep this freedom and, and to grow it and to, uh, you know, to keep running with it. Perfect. I mean, you alluded earlier that you know you have something in the works. Like, is that something you can already share with us today, or is that still like top secret? Yeah, yeah, I, I can share. I mean, basically, uh, so I, I've been, you know, I provide information for, for people right now. That's like, I'm I'm trying to solve this problem um, of you know shorter men who want to dress well uh, by providing content and videos and eBooks and courses. Um, but I always knew that, like, eventually I have to uh, transition into not just helping with information, but actual products, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I'm kind of um, just getting getting my feet wet in, in that world right now. And uh, I won't go too much into it, but but you know, I hope to to have something to offer my audience uh, that's a little more tangible pretty soon. Okay. All right. That sounds very very good. And. Uh, well, last questions from my side. If, if any readers have any questions right now, now is the time to ask it. But my question would be, where do you see yourself in, in five years from now? You know, what, what do you want to be in five years? What, where do you see yourself? Or, yeah. Honestly, uh, you know, I, I, I would really like to be um, kind, of, kind of where you are, you know, like, like kind of just... <laughs> I, I, want, I want my site to... to uh, to get, you know, it's, it's doing well. I mean, it's getting a lot of traffic, but I, I want it to, I know that there's a lot of men who have no idea who I am or, or about the modest man, I want to reach them. Uh, and, you know, I, I kind of want to um, start uh, offering different things, you know, like I said, not just information, kind of like you, you've done with Fort Belvedere. So, um, yeah, I, I just, I just want to keep growing at a good pace and, you know, eventually when I can't do it all myself, maybe I'll hire somebody, but, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of just, I'm kind of just really enjoying the process, and um, as long as things keep going as they are, I think I'll be happy in five years. Perfect. That's that's awesome. Yeah, and it's like you know, in my experience, you just things evolve. You know, when opportunities arise, mm -hmm. and I would have never, you know, when I started it, I never thought about creating a brand or, or doing this. But then you meet other people like Antonio Centeno from Real Men Real Style, or, or you know, Aaron Marino from Alpha M, and you. You learn about their story and what they did, and or you know like Brad McKay from the Art of Manliness. I mean, there are always people to look up to, you know, who have achieved something that you strive for. And but you give it your own twist. You you find your niche and, and you find something. And I think for you, you know, there's a huge market for men. You know, five five, five six, five four, five three. Not yeah. just in the U.S. but globally. And uh, to my knowledge, you're the only person who kind of focuses on these. So I, I think you, you definitely have something there. And it's just a matter of time until you get a larger scale exposure. And from then, you know, it just will snowball in a way. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, it, it's definitely a global thing because I have a lot of readers, uh, uh, a lot of Indian men, uh, Asian men, Hispanic men, you know, who are. Uh, in different parts of the world, and um, and you know where, where men are just shorter in general, mm -hmm. uh, and so I mean I would love one day to you know be able to translate all my content. Uh, you know I have a Spanish uh, version of the site, and uh, so that's that's something I love to focus on too. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate the encouragement. Okay, so we have two more questions here. One is um, where it says I'm five five, but my wife is is six feet tall. You cover dressing taller in great detail. But are there any tips that can at least help me blend in a little more with her to make us stand out a little less? Yeah. Uh, first of all, congrats. Uh, that, that's awesome because I, I think there's so many people who um, I see it all. You know, there, there's a Reddit, there's a subreddit called R Short, and uh, uh, 
it can be kind of a depressing place sometimes. There's a lot of people who say, well, I can't date tall women, you know. So I, I, I totally think that you can, and, uh, and that's pretty cool. Um, it's so, all about the person, you know. If the person's right, the height should never matter. But I know some women, they are at this ideal and say, oh, I need somebody who's taller than me. But, yeah, that's not it. If the person is right, the, the height doesn't matter, you know. The, the look right. doesn't matter. It's the person that, that's behind it. Totally, totally. And, I mean, so, so one thing you're going to run into, is, especially if you go out and she wants to wear heels, she's going to be, you know, at three inches to her right, right? One thing you can do, and... Um, Check out, check out on the blog. I have a couple articles about this. Uh, not for everybody, but you can wear uh, height increasing shoes. And uh, especially in your case, say you're going to like a, you know, a formal event, she wants, she's going to wear heels. Uh, at the very least, you can counteract that, uh, that boost that the heels give her by wearing uh, either height increasing shoes. Two inch higher, like foam inserts and stuff like that, right? Where you just get that little extra, get the hairstyle up, get that up, and you know, get, get that, yeah. up, so like posture, you know, have good posture. But yeah, you could try that out. I mean, I, I have a couple pairs, and I don't wear them all the time, but uh, but you know, what one of the occasion calls for it. So. Okay, okay. Um, Clayton says, as a not so tall person, personal presentation in the work environment can be very important when competing with Goliath coworkers. And for a casual work environment, any ideas for helping me stand out, something to make me pop, collar or coordinate, watch with belt or something like that? It's a very good question, I think. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, yeah, for Clayton, like, the way, the way you dress is going to be hugely important in, in the workplace, especially if you're trying to, if you're competing, you know, with guys who are, who are maybe taller and have just a more natural, a more commanding presence naturally just because they're bigger, you know. Um, a lot of little things. I mean, obviously, make sure your clothes, make sure the fit is, is on point. If, if you wear clothes that fit and you're standing next to a, a much taller guy whose clothes don't fit, you're going to look that. Everybody's going to look that. Mm -hmm. uh, pay attention to color. Um, I just did I did a webinar a couple weeks ago about color. It's on YouTube. And it's all about like, your skin tone and contrast levels. And again, these are subtle little things that people will look at you, and they won't know why you look so good but they'll all realize that you look good. Exactly. You know? Yeah, so check that out. And then, yeah, add, add some little personal things to your outfit. You know, get a cool watch, um, you know, little accessories, um, and you'll, you'll, you'll be fine. Okay. I know we're over time, but one more question here. Hey, do you guys feel that double-breasted jackets are more suited for tall and slender, or is there a rule worth following? What's your take on that? Yeah, that's one of those things you're going to hear. Um, and I guess in general it's kind of true that Double breast jackets can make a shorter guy look shorter if you don't get it right. I just actually bought um, my first double breasted suit, and it looks awesome. And it's um, it's got some little details that that help. It, it fits really well. Um, it's got a pretty aggressive taper in the torso. Mm -hmm. The jacket is cropped a little short, like a little shorter. Mm -hmm. um, it's like that's probably like the number one thing. Like if you get a double breasted jacket. Make sure the jacket's not too long. Yeah. So it so, should just come down just to the bottom of your butt and no lower. It's a great point. The other point I think th that helps is first of all, peak lapels. You know, they, they just give that this kind of V shape that makes you look up. And then if you want to wear a double breasted sh suit as a not so tall person, make sure that the overlap is rather slim. Because if the buttons um, from left to right are, it makes you just look wide. Yeah. If you slim that down and maybe have the top part slightly set wider, you you still look taller and slimmer and not just wider and massive. So I think that's an important point. I mean, do you remember, like, did you pick a wide overlap or a, a short one, Brock? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, uh, it's definitely a little shorter, and I went with um, just four buttons, so so not the extra two buttons on top or the wider two buttons. Yep. Uh, also, like, if you're going to get a suit with a pattern in it, uh, or if you're going to get a double breast jacket or suit, you can choose a very small-scale pattern. So it'll look proportionate mm -hmm. with your size. So like, if you're going to do some sort of check or plaid or, or, or stripes, make sure they're very small in scale. Exactly. Yeah. Don't, don't get big patterns. Big patterns are good if you're tall, but mm -hmm. if you're shorter, a smaller pattern will make everything, will make you look bigger in comparison to the pattern. Right, right. Perfect. All right, well, Brock, 
thank you very much for for taking the time. I know you're you're busy. You have a wedding of your sister coming up. I hope that will be awesome. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. I think it was really informative. This video is going to be um, available afterwards online. We'll try to add links to the um, websites Brock mentioned and the webinars and everything. So make sure to check back. And we'll also add some pictures on our website um, from Brock, just how he looks, what he does, and there'll be a transcript. So if you've missed some of it, um, come back to the Gentleman's Gazette interview page for The Modest Man. And uh, have a fantastic weekend, everyone. Thank you for Thanks joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks, Brock. All right, take care.